And also, uh, Thomas said that can we grad students know less chemistry than chemistry? Okay, so um, are you posting these lectures? I can believe that. Yeah. Um, so we've been talking about um, some examples um, that uh, we went through using spreadsheets to do nonlinear fitting, um, which uh, you're going to need to do um, to prepare your lab reports for this course. Um, and so like I said last time, you know, after we collect data in the laboratory, then we go to our computers to analyze it. Um, but you know, that's like really foolish because it's just going to create more data, but you know, that's what we do anyway, right? Because we're scientists. Okay, so last time uh, we talked about an example involving nonlinear fitting. Um, I showed you um, some examples um, relevant to the uh, FTIR lab, the Fourier Transform Infrared Lab on HCL. And we also started looking at um, an example that was related to um, the inversion of sucrose lab, uh, where you need to do nonlinear fitting to an arbitrary equation. So this is an equation that is not one of the default equations that's available um, as, as one of the trend line options in uh, Excel. Um, and so um, yeah, so just as a reminder, in this um, experiment, uh, basically you are decomposing sucrose into its components, and you're following the uh, course of the reaction by using polarimetry, measuring the um, rotation of plane polarized light as it passes through the sample. As the sucrose gets converted to glucose and fructose, the polarization gets rotated, or the rotation changes, um, and you're following that, and we're fitting to this equation down here. And so um, we, we, we did this fit last time. Um, and um, we, uh, we got some results. I'll, I'll go and, and show you that in just a second. But what we didn't have time uh, to do last time was look at the error analysis in the fit parameters. And so, yeah, so we worked through this example that's shown here. Um, but uh, we're using the Excel solver, which is a really powerful tool because you know, you could, we, we could have chosen any equation that we can calculate and we could have fit it using the Excel solver. It doesn't have to have a linear format or be an exponential function or a logarithmic function or one of the built-in um, functions that's available. We can use any arbitrary function and fit it. Um, but unfortunately, the Excel solver doesn't output any um, statistics, right? So we can't directly get the error estimation in the parameters that we get. And so the, the method that you can use then um, is a method called the jackknife method. So jackknife methods basically involve analy analyzing a subset of your data set. So if you throw away part of your data and analyze the rest of it, that's, that's a jackknife method. Uh, and it's called a jackknife method because basically you're chopping away part of your data set with a, with a knife, right? Um, and so um, the way that we're going to use jackknife estimators um, is by systematically leaving out one observation. So you, you leave out each observation one at a time, and then you calculate the parameters that you want using the remaining observations. Okay, And then you obtain the uncertainty in the parameters um, from the standard deviations uh, of the results that are obtained from those repeated calculations of the parameter. Okay, And so if the parameter is really sensitive to which data points you use, right? If you leave one out and it changes a lot, then there's going to be a lot of uncertainty in that parameter. If it's not so sensitive, then you, you've probably um, you, you, you've measured that parameter to within a, a smaller uncertainty. Okay, so the method is we're going to use the Excel solver to find the best fit parameters. We're going to repeat the process n times, right? Where n is the number of measurements. On the first iteration, we're going to leave out the first data point that we measured. On the second iteration, we're going to leave out the second data point, and so forth. Uh, and then we're going to, um, so, so we're going to have n different sets of parameters. We're going to calculate the standard deviation, sigma, um, of the repeated um, determinations of the, the parameters. In this case, it's the rate constant k and the alpha infinity parameter, right? This is the um, optical rotation. Uh, that you would measure if you allow the reaction to go to completion. Uh, and then in order to obtain the 95% confidence intervals, um, you're going to uh, 
use the equation that we know and love by now, right? We've, we've done this many times um, already. Um, so you calculate the 95% confidence interval by taking the student t coefficient times sigma over the square root of the number of measurements. And here, uh, n is the total number of measurements, and nu um, is the number of degrees of freedom in the fit. So um, if you have n measurements and you're fitting two parameters, k and alpha infinity, then nu is going to be n minus 2. OK? And you look up t of nu, of course, in the, in the student t table. OK, so we're now going to do an example. So let me bring up the um, spreadsheet that we had last time. OK, so we, we have a measured data set, right? So we measured the optical rotation alpha as a function of time. This is just a reduced data set with four measurements. Uh, when you go to do this lab, you'll take more measurements than this. Um, and then we use the Excel solver in order to um, find the, the best fit values of alpha infinity and of the pseudo first order rate constant k. Okay, and so I've already plotted the data points in red here and the best fit through the data points is shown in blue. You can see we get a really nice fit. Um, and basically we, we calculated this fit by uh, using the Excel solver to minimize the chi-squared, right? Chi-squared is the sum of the squares of the residuals. And when you want to do a uh, least squares regression, the criterion for the best fit is that you get the minimum value of chi-squared. Okay? Uh, so basically, now what we want to do is use the jackknife method in order to get the uncertainty in these parameters. So here's the best fit value of these parameters. I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, these parameters down here because um, I'm going to basically use, use the jackknife method and I'm going to um, like overwrite the values that are, that are currently in these cells with the, with the jackknife estimated values. So just so that we don't lose the best fit, um, I'll, uh, maybe I'll copy it one more row down. Right, and then um, these are the best fit. So the best fit that we obtained for these three parameters is this one. Okay, and now basically what I want to do is I want to recalculate chi-squared question. Uh, shouldn't we have alpha zero to not be a parameter because it's not our intercept from the... Uh, I'm not setting it as a parameter. It's, um, yeah, I copied it down when we when we go to use the solver, we're only going to select these two. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I could have I could have left it the same because it's not going to change. Okay. You're you're right. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, we want to recalculate chi squared, um, but only using uh, you know three out of the four parameters, right? So we want to calculate chi squared using only these three, um, you know, leaving out the first. Um, value of alpha, then leaving out the second value of alpha, right, then leaving out the third, then leaving out the fourth. So, you know, I could sort of, um, you know, make four separate tables of the fitted alpha each time leaving out one of the parameters, right, and we could sort of do it that way. That would be the brute force way. Um, there's actually a quicker way that we can do this. So I can make another column here, and I can call this column um, the jackknife chi square, and in this column, I'm just going to put the four um, chi squared values that we want. And so the quickest way to, to calculate this is you take the chi squared value that is calculated using all of the residuals, right? So, so this value here is this plus this plus this plus this, and I'm going to make that a static reference by adding dollar signs in front of the number and letter of the reference cell. And then I'm going to first subtract this R squared value right here. Okay, so now this number is all four numbers added together minus the first number. So it's just the, the second, third, and fourth R squared value. Okay, does that make sense? And so 
the first thing that we're going to do is minimize this um, chi squared, and that's that's the first iteration of the jackknife method. Then we're going to repeat the jackknife method. The second time we take the all four values added together minus the second value, right? That gives us just the first, third, and fourth. Then we take all the R squareds added together minus the third one. That gives us just the remaining three, and so forth. Okay? So I'm going to now uh, basically repeat um, using the uh, Excel solver. So remember, this was in the data uh, tab. And again, if the solver doesn't appear here in the data tab, it means it's probably not, um, you, you haven't installed the plugin. And just as a reminder, uh, that's in the file menu. You go to File, Options. And um, under Options, you need to go to Add-ins. And you need to find the solver add-in and, and select it and then click Go in order to install it. OK? Um, but in my case, it's already installed. So I'm just going to click on the solver. And now um, it's set to the, the, the previous fit that we did. So previously, we were um, minimizing this chi-squared value here. Uh, but we want to set the objective differently, because now we want to minimize this chi-squared value here, which is you know, just for using three of these r-squared values. OK, so if I set the objective differently, um, then now we're going to minimize this value here. And we're going to do that by changing the values in cells G2 through H2. I think that's already set correctly. It's these two cells here. Um, and you can add constraints if you want, right? Um, so for example, if, if your fit is not converging correctly, you could say, you know, for example, you, you want the best fit value of alpha infinity. You know, maybe you want this best fit value of alpha infinity. You want to constrain it to be less than or equal to the final value of alpha that you measured, for example. Right, that would be one example of a, you know, reasonable fit constraint to add. Um, OK, yeah, here's the constraint. OK, but in our case, we're not going to need that. Um, so I'll just delete that for now. Um, OK, and then I'm going to use the default uh, fitting option, and I'm going to click Solve. And now it, it comes up with a result. Previously, this number was 0.01. Now it's 0.008. So you can see now it's been fit a little bit better. So the fit, you know, it did something. And so I'm going to click OK to keep the solver solution. And um, if you were paying attention, so these values, this was the previous best fit value. Now they changed a little bit. OK, so the new um, best fit values of alpha, infinity, and k are these two values. So I'll just copy them over here. So this is the jackknife um, alpha infinity. And that has units of degrees. And then here is the uh, jackknife uh, best fit value of the, um, of the rate constant k in units of reciprocal seconds. OK. And we're just going to repeat this manually. Uh, you'll have a few more data points, but um, it's not too bad. You just have to run the solver again, change the objective cell and click Solve, and it'll come up with a new solution. These numbers are going to change a little bit. Uh, this one and this one, now that you can see they're a little different. I'll take the, the second solution and copy it over here. Uh, now I'm going to run the solver one more time. This time I'm going to set uh, the objective to the third um, value of chi-squared that we calculated. Solve again. And you do this once for each number of, of data, you know, once for each data point that you collected. So we're in the solver one final time. I'll change the objective to this um, box right here. And do one final fit. And here's the best fit values that we get. Again, I'll copy those over. OK. And so you can see um, the best fit value for alpha infinity uh, you know, it's always somewhere around negative 10 degrees, but there's some variation in this number. 
and that's due to uncertainty. And the best fit values for k, they're always approximately 4 times 10 to the minus um, 4 per second, but there's a little bit of variation. Okay? And so the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to calculate the standard deviation of the fit parameters that we obtained using the jackknife method. So I'm going to take the standard deviation of um, these values here, of this list of numbers. And maybe for the sake of the video, I'll increase the size of these cells a little bit. You might be able to see it better. Okay, and then I'll take, uh, actually I can just copy the formula over, so copy, paste, and the reference should uh, move over automatically, so now I'm getting the standard deviation of these guys here. Okay, uh, but then in order to get the 95% confidence interval, we're going to need to use the student T um, value, so 95% CI, and I think it's 4.5. Three, is that right? I'll just check. So, yeah, okay, so uh, the number of degrees of freedom in this particular case, we measured four data points. Uh, we're fitting two parameters, so four minus two is two. So we want to use uh, the student t parameter for nu equals two, which is 4.3. And so if I plug that in here, uh, we're going to want to calculate 4.3 times the standard deviation in the parameter divided by the square root of the number of measurements, which is 4. Okay, and then I can just copy this formula over. That should work. Okay, and so then um, the best fit value of uh, these fit parameters is the value that you obtained using, oh, I'm sorry, it's over here, using the full data set. Right, so it's this value that we calculated last time in which I copied down into these cells here. Right, so the best fit, so, so the, the, for example, the value of alpha that you would report would be this number here, minus 10.2 degrees, plus or minus the uncertainty, which is 0 0.5 degrees. And then the best fit value of k is gonna be uh, four, let's see how many significant figures there are. So the uncertainty, is uh, three times 10 to the minus five. So I'm gonna report basically two significant figures here. I'm gonna report 4.5 times 10 to the minus four, right, plus or minus uh, 0 0.3 times 10 to the minus four. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, if not, um, that concludes the... Uh, Yeah, okay, so yeah, basically our, our task was to use the jackknife method to determine the uncertainty in the nonlinear fitting parameters that we obtained in the previous example. And like I just said, the value of alpha that we're get, gonna get is minus 10.2 plus or minus 0.5, and the value of k that we got was 4.6 plus or minus 0.3 times 7 to the minus four per second. Okay? 